Hey guys, Harry here from the Art Gear Guy. Thanks very much for joining me today. Um, so I'm not going to have any reviews up before Christmas, as Christmas is only today. As I'm doing this is the um, 20th, I think it is, 20th of December, 21st. Yeah, Friday the 20th of December. So I'm not going to get a review out before then, but uh, what I thought I would do is... Um, as it's coming towards the end of the year, that type of thing, I thought maybe, um, I've been doing this now for three years, I've been doing reviews for about two and a half years, but I've been involved with art for about three years, and in that period of time, my art has obviously progressed and got better and what have you, so I thought I would show you kind of like where I started out, how my work was when I first started, and the reasons why it took me so long whenever I was doing reviews to to to, to also do like speed drones with the products that it was that it was reviewing because for for the longest time I when I was reviewing a product I didn't put out any speed drones or anything like that I didn't do any artwork um, with the products then I started doing artwork but I didn't record it I would just do the artwork and take some photographs and put those up. And then I realized, you know, a lot of people were saying, oh, it'd be a good idea to try the speed drones. And to be quite honest with you, I didn't really know how to do that. Uh, but I found out and subsequently the speed drones have been quite uh, successful. So they certainly help whenever uh, all four components of the way I do my reviews, the written review, the video review, the speed drone, and then the still images uh, on the Art Gear Guide. Those four different kind of like components of the reviews seem to help people understand the product a little bit better. So that 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 was good. Anyway, let's let's get into the actual um, the work that I started out with. Now I've put this in as best chronicolo chronological order as I can. So, and as we're going through, I, a lot of this work is uh, a lot of this art is influenced by other artists that I came across on YouTube, and I I will. If I can remember exactly who the artist was, I'll tell you. And it's same with the products that I've used. I can't remember 100% the products that I used on each and every artwork. But most of them are on the Art Gear Guide. So you will be able to go through and, and double check what I'm saying. So first of all, before I started getting into colour pencil, I just had graphite pencils. Just ordinary pencils. And you can see here, the, the first drawing that I'd done was of Iron Man. And it was pretty shocking. But you can see there, um, values, everything's just, I, I didn't understand it. And this was done on, on cartridge paper as well. So again, you know, I didn't understand anything about paper, shading, values, none of that. Um, when I very first started, one of the artists that really, really, the, the first artist that I watched and, and learned an awful lot from was a guy called Mark Crilly, who I'm sure a lot of you are already aware of. He's, he's a, a manga artist, but he also does a lot of realism and stuff like that. So he would do these tutorials and he would show you how to break down the paper or break down things into boxes and then draw it around boxes, a little bit like the grid method. Uh, this one, I, I drew this one about six or seven times because it was, uh, the way he thought it, the way he, um, did it on his videos was really, it seemed really easy and it's, and it was something that I really wanted to do. Uh, one of Mark Crilly's things back then was, you know, just cheap products, pencils, and then just outline it with a black Prismacolor pencil. And that was really all you really needed to do with a, a Dixon Ticonderoga pencil and a black Prismacolor pencil, a little bit of white gouache, and that was that was his thing, and that was one of the things that appealed to me most of all about his artwork. So I've done this this cat thing as well. This was like one of the first things that I did. Now the artwork that I'm showing you here is um, all within like you know I've done a few of these maybe in one day because they're just. Um, just graphite that type of thing but you will you will see the progression as as I go along here and I I've got them kind of like split down into two parts so this is like still well within my very very early stages I'd seen this uh, horse I tried to draw that and you can see it looks it looks terrible um, I seen this this image of these birds uh, and I tried to copy them. I can't remember the artist that I seen this from, but this is not my original artwork or anything like that. I seen this, another artist had done this and I wanted to copy it. 
Then it done this Disney character. I don't, can't even remember who. I, I'm not even sure who this is. Rapunzel, maybe it might be. Um, and then I had watched a lot of different artists do tigers and leopards, that type of thing. So I, th- I tried my own. Again, this was another Mark Crilly uh, drawn that he did. Uh, he uh, the way he does things is it, it simplifies things very very easily. But obviously, the way he was doing it, it came out a lot more realistic than this. Then I've done this uh, drawing, and this was the first drawing that I was really kind of re- really quite proud of. Um, this was uh, I, you can see here. I'm starting to understand a little bit more about the shading, but the values are still terrible. You know, it's still quite light all over um, in comparison. Um, again, I've done this this drawing, and I was just trying to practice my shading my values that type of thing still didn't still not really getting the gist of values at this point it wasn't until i done this one and i was really super proud of this now this is like i say this is all graphite so this is before i've really started understanding color pencils or even getting into color pencils i don't think he, at this stage i didn't have any color pencils but this was the first drawing that i was really really super proud of and it kind of it, it shocked me a little bit as to how good it was and uh, you can see here. I'm starting to. I'm starting to understand the the importance of value and that type of thing. Um, so that that was another one of the the dragon that I showed you first of all. Uh, and I think I've got another one of the, this dragon again. This is a Mark Crilly thing uh, on tanned paper later on in here. Uh, I've done this this drawing, the Guns and Roses drawing again. You can see. It's not a great drawing, but you can see I'm starting to understand. This is where the, the understanding of values and stuff like that comes into it. So when I got um, started with colored pencils, uh, Mark Crilly would do these little chibi things. And, and, and I drew loads of these little chibi things. And this was kind of like what got me introduced into manga and anime. Because I'd never really heard of manga and anime up until watching Mark Crilly. Um, so I would draw lots of these, um, and this this was like um, a friend of my daughter's wanted something doing for her, so I'd done that. Uh, this was a Mark Crilly thing. In fact, actually, it might be a proper manga character. I'm not 100% sure. Um, and then I'd done one for my daughter. Now, I've been using, with this one here, I, I started using felt-tip pens, and the felt-tip pens that I was using was the... Um, Uh, the, the Stadler felt tip pens and these Stabilo felt tip pens, which are really good quality felt tip pens. Um, but you can still see, you know, they're not really. You can still see all the marks in them and stuff like that, and you, you get all the problems that you get with felt tip pens. So again, I'm still doing a lot of Mark Crilly stuff. I'm learning lots and lots of different things from from his tutorials. And then I got my first set of uh, Copic markers. I got a 36 set of Copic Chow markers. And um, I, at this point, I was also watching um, an artist called, uh, his channel name's Lethal Chris. Um, and his artwork is fantastic as well. He, do, he does lots of fan art and uh, manga, that type of thing. So I was watching a lot of his stuff. And this image was from one of his drawings. So I got my 36 set of uh, Copic Chow markers and done done this drawing. But um, this was kind of like letter set pad paper. So it is designed for markers, but it was really super thin. It's just like cartridge paper, really. Uh, and at this point, I'm kind of like thinking, oh, I don't know what all the fuss is about with the, these Copic markers type of thing. Um, but it was obviously just because I didn't really get a fair understanding of it. I didn't really understand it. Uh, I'd done this drawing. This was just something I was bored of did. Uh, it was another Mark Crilly tutorial. I think this was um, a drawing from Lethal Chris. I can't remember... Or it might have been an, a one from uh, an artist called Stephen Ward, who is uh, an Australian artist. Again, somebody that does lots of fan art, that type of thing. 
um, where I got a lot of influence from those guys. This one is from Lethal Chris. He done these um, manga bits and I copied them. And again, th these were using the um, the Copic Child markers that I got. So this was the, the 36 set of Copic Child markers and I was kind of like starting to understand them a little bit better, starting to use them a little bit better. Um, the, again, this was another draw, and this is from the, the, the Disney movie, or the Pixar movie, Up. Um, but Lethal Chris had done that. Uh, this was... Uh, this is actually supposed to... I think this is actually pastel paper, Ing Ingress pastel paper. But I'd done this, this dragon again. It features quite heavily at the beginning of my artwork and stuff like that because it was something that I really wanted to perfect because when Mark Crilly was doing it, it was gorgeous looking. Um, and then I seen, I'm sure, do you want to know something? I think some of you will probably know who these artists are now. But I seen this drawn um, in a colour pencil magazine and I wanted to draw it and it was exactly the same as this. You know, obviously it was done much, much better, but... This was kind of like my first introduction into coloured pencils. And this, I, I'm nearly sure, this was either done with Derwent Artists or it was done with Prismacolor. Because they were the two sets that I got first. So I can't remember which one was which. Um, but I was really, really pleased with this drawing for some reason. Um, I thought it looked great. Uh, then again, I, I was kind of like flipping between colored pencils and markers. Uh, this was a, um, a drawing that I really struggled with, but um, I was quite happy with it, the way it turned out. Um, then my mother and father-in-law asked me to do their dogs, and I got this far, and I kind of like just sacked it after that. The, this was with... Um, Prismacolor pencils and some of the Derwent artist pencils as well. I'm nearly sure um, But I just I, I got to this one and I was just like, oh, you know what? I'm making a mess out of this and it's just It's supposed to be for somebody. So I just stopped at that point um, This was just an image that I took from um, Pinterest, but I think also the artist lethal Chris he done a, a version of this and I kind of like Took a lot of hints from him as well. Um, then I, I got back into trying to do these leopards and tigers and lions and stuff like that. Because I loved watching um, Lisa from Lockery Fine Art. She was doing a lot of this stuff at the time as well. Um, and, and I was heavily watching a lot of what Lisa was doing. So I, I'd done this. I, I kind of like stopped it after I got down to the face. But again, now this is kind of like my first real push into colour pencils, you can see here. And I'm not really I'm not really understanding them at all. And again, the paper is te terrible. It's uh, really bad paper. Then I tried this one and I thought to myself, when I, was gonna, when I was starting this one, I thought, I'm really, really going to push the boat out on this one. I'm going to take my time and um, I, I'm going to try and do the best I can. And I was using Odalus Minospirts for the first time with the background. But it was just, it was getting a mess and I just thought, oh, I'm just going to leave it. So I left it. Now, again, with coloured pencils, I really got into drawing birds and in particular kingfishers. I loved the colours of them, that type of thing. Um, the only thing that I was pleased with about this one was the, the actual uh, wood trunk that it was perched on. Uh, so I tried it again and I think by this time, I think I had... Uh, a set of Faber-Castell Polychromos. I think I had the 60 set. So I think, I'm nearly sure this one was done with uh, Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils, but uh, I was I was actually quite pleased with this one. Um, I, I was okay with that one. Then I kind of like went back to the, the, the graphite and I was trying, I mean, like so many artists, I was drawing loads of eyes and things like that. So I was, I was drawing those and trying to get roses as well, trying to perfect roses. Um, so th that's what I was doing with the graphite. This this drawing is of um, um, 
uh, what do you call a plant? Uh, I forget what the, 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 the correct name of them are. They're beautiful plants. They're quite rare and stuff like that. Some of them are very expensive. The name will come to me. But I've seen this drawn on, on, on Pinterest and Instagram and stuff like that. And I can't for the life of me remember the artist. But I tried to do it, replicate it so many times because it was such a beautiful drawing. But I just couldn't get it at all. So I just gave it up. Then I went and got um, the virtual instructor. Uh, I, I downloaded a few of his courses. Very, very good artist. Uh, teaches like all sorts of things. Colour pencils, that type of stuff. Uh, pastels, watercolour, marker, all sorts of things. And this was one of the, the things uh, courses on his colour pencil course. Trying to teach shade and that type of thing. Light and... and but I wasn't really terribly pleased with this this was done with prismacolor pencils um the, again i tried this bird and I, w once it finished with it i was kind of quite pleased with it but then you know it's it's funny when you look back at your work and you think my goodness what 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 made you pleased with this um then i got uh, i'm at this point now i'm starting to get sent I'm starting to get uh, into doing reviews and stuff like that. And I got sent uh, a set of markers from Stylefile. So I'd done this drawing with the Stylefile markers. It wasn't part of the review, but it was just me kind of like testing the waters with them. Um, I also done this Spider-Man drawing as well. This was kind of like my first big um, fan art drawing. And, and I was really quite pleased with this whenever I'd done it. I was... Um, I was really impressed with that. Um, this was from another Australian uh, marker artist. And I kind of like followed a, a, a tutorial that they were doing. It's a, an anime character of some description. Uh, again, this was another drawing from Lethal Chris. Only this time I kind of like had proper paper. This is on Strathmore uh, Bristol Vellum 300. Which isn't really the best type of paper to be using with markers. But I thought, you know, it's thicker. Uh, so because I've been using the thin paper up until this point and I wanted to I was trying to find paper that was much more substantial um, but I tried it with the Bristol vellum you can see it doesn't really lend itself well to blending the colors because it's such an absorbent paper it's much better for color pencils um, Bristol smooth or Bristol plate is much better for markers but so the, again a lot of this is just learning experiences you know uh again this was another drawing that i had done um f i think this was a, a lethal chris one but you can see here there's no there's no there's no there's nothing there's no light values or anything like that in this there's no shade or the shade is pretty bad so uh this is all just marker and at this point i hadn't really it hadn't really sank into my head you know use pencils as well to, to highlight things uh, I'd done this drawing uh, using just colored pencils uh, again th this was another drawing that I was really pleased with when I first done it and I think it was m more the face that I was pleased with because I established that kind of like 3d effect which I, I really really liked uh, this is another manga drawing that I've done. This is all just marker. You can see a theme here with all of the work that I've done. It's all kind of like um, marker and colored pencils. I, again, see this is the, the real thin paper that I was telling you about. It's, it's, it is marker paper and it, it's four markers, but it, it just it's like cartridge paper. Um, and then this was... So all of these drawings were kind of like done within the period of about a year and a half. My first year and a half of drawing. Um, year and a half, almost two years. And then I started trying to kind of like push things up a little bit. So I started trying to do stuff on tanned paper and grey paper. This is just colour pencils and... Again, when I done this, I was really pleased with myself. I thought that's really good. Um, I done this Batman drawing, fan art on tan paper. This was with 
Prismacolor pencils. And again, I was actually really quite impressed with this. And I, I thought to myself, you, you know, I could see the improvement that I was making. This drawing here, um, a lot of people love it. They see it on my Instagram and stuff. And this was the first drawing that I really sat down and, and worked really, really hard on it. And I think this might have been done with, I think at this point I might have had the Karen Dash Luminance. Um, but I, 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 I was really pleased with this drawing when, it, when, when I'd done it. And I, I was kind of like kicking myself that I hadn't recorded it. Um, and this was done on Strathmore 500 series as well. So I'm starting to understand the papers and stuff like that at this point. Again, this is another drawing that um, I, I, I could see myself, the, the, the progress in my work and stuff like that. This was done with uh, markers and colored pencils. So there was a combination of everything in there. Um, I then done this drawn here and this one here was done the original version of this that I copied from was uh, the an Australian artist called Stephen Ward an outstanding artist um, and if you if you look back to let me see if I can find it um, yeah there it is so if you look back to the first Venom drawing that I that I actually did and and you compare the both you, you can see that there's there's definitely an improvement uh, coming along there um, then I um, I started getting sent products for by this point I was getting sent products by companies to review um, I'd done this one, this was coming up to Christmas I think or Halloween, I can't remember what it was, but th this was just Prismacolor on tan. But I got sent through um, the illustrator markers back from Spectrum Noir and it was the first time really that uh, a company outside of Derwent had kind of like showing faith and trust in, in me and my reviews and what have you. And I wanted to do some artwork that was really good uh, and it was going to show off their products really well. But again, I wasn't doing um, speed drawings or anything at this point, so I was just taking photographs. And th this was the, the end result of the, the Spectrum Noir Illustrator markers. Um, and I was really, really impressed with this drawing. I, th this was kind of like the first drawing that I could really see that I had potential at becoming an artist. Um, I think with this one I had used the Spectrum Noir Illustrator artist, or Illustrator markers and I think I used their colour blend pencils as well. So there was a combination of both in there. Uh, now I'm going to get a little bit chronologically out of order here but this was a piece that I'd done and this was done with Karen Dash Pablos so I had like some Pablo pencils, just pure pencils with this one. Um, this was f uh, for a product that I was reviewing. I think this was the Stabilo colored pencils. Uh, this one was, uh, I, I was just feeling really, really down one day and I wanted to do something that had a lot of color in it and I seen this SpongeBob uh, image and I just thought that, I want to do that because it had a load of color in it and, and, and I just needed to cheer myself up. So this was done with uh, Copic markers and pencils. Um, again, this was another one from Stephen Ward, uh, the Australian artist. Um, there's a lot of things wrong with this, but I actually, I actually liked it whenever it, it came out and it was kind of like done. This was a color pencil um, drawn, and it was, uh, it was for a review, and I think this one is a speed drawn as well. Um, this was coming up to Christmas last year, I think it was, 2018, Christmas 2018. Um, I'd done this, this little image of Donald Duck and these little baby ducks. I can't even remember their, their names now. Um, but I, I was really pleased with this. I, I really enjoyed doing this drawing as well. This was something that I enjoyed doing. Um, 
when Derwent brought out their light fast pencils, I done this. This is a kind of like a Peter Rabbit image. It's from the Beatrix Potter novels. And because obviously uh, Derwent is in the, 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 the Lake District in Keswick and Beatrix Potter lived just down the road a little bit from Keswick. So um, Derwent and Beatrix Potter have a lot in common. They're, so I, th that was the reason why I done this image with the, the Dermot Lightfast pencils. And I think this was kind of like around the time when the, the, the 3610 was just about coming out. I'd been sent a lot of pencils beforehand. So I had done this drawing quite a bit beforehand. Um, I'd done this Thanos drawing. This was another drawing that I put a lot of time and effort into. And then I just destroyed it by putting this background on. And it was just the biggest mistake in my life. Um, but I also have this, I, I took photographs of the image, um, without the background. So I've, I've, I've got photographs of both, but it was a, a learning curve. I, I always find, um, backgrounds difficult. So it was, uh, it was something that I, a lesson that I learned. Uh, I done a smaller one of these, but this again was another review. I think this was, um, I think this might have been a Koei Noor product that I was reviewing. Uh, this wasn't a review or anything like that. This was just a drawing that I wanted to do because my mum is... She loves Peter Pan and Tinkerbell and stuff like that. So I, I just done that drawing. Um, again, this was for Derwent Pro Color. So when, Der when Derwent brought out the Pro Color, I done this drawing. Um... This was all colour pencil as well. This was for the comparison video that I've done of the Derwin Colorsoft, the Artist, the Pro Colour and the Light Fast. Just showing you kind of like the different um, ways that the pencil lays down, that type of thing. So I was telling you earlier on as well about the style file markers that came from Germany. This was the first, the, I, this was, I'd done a review of their, their markers. And this was the drawing that I'd done. And when I'd done this drawing, I was so, so impressed with this drawing. I really loved this drawing. When, I, when it had all been done and came out and stuff like that. Um, and the style file as well, they, they loved it as well. They, they were really, really impressed with it. Um, then... I done this Spider-Man drawing. I can't remember the products that I used for this, but this was it might have been the Tombow um, color pencils, but it was for a review. Then I done this this drawing of the Hulk and the Hulk Buster. I was really really impressed with this drawing as well. Um, there's just sometimes when you do a drawing or a piece of artwork and you just know that it's going to turn out really well, and you, you just know it's going to work well. Again, this was another one of Spectrum Noir. I'd done Spectrum Noir's... Um, I, I think I'd done this with their graphic markers, maybe, or their illustrator markers. I can't remember. But I do have it up on um, the the Art Gear Guide, so you can go across and see for definite. Um, I'd done this little small one with some Art and Fly markers, which I, I have another review coming up of, actually, of the, the Art and Fly markers, but it, it was just showing you the... The vibrancy of the color of the markers and stuff like that. Uh, I've done another Boba Fett drawing, um, so you can see that it, things. That, I mean, it, the original artist of this, I copied basically the, their their image, um, but you can see that my work is getting much much better. So now we're kind of like coming up to present time, really. Uh, this is a very recent drawing that I've done this Captain America drawn and um, when I finished this I, I mean this one took me quite a while but I was really really um, I was really impressed with this uh, I, I struggled for so long with human portraiture that type of thing and when I when I I'd done this I was really impressed with it now one of the things that I the one of the reasons I did this was because it's not the full face or anything like that it's you know he's got a mask on so it was a little bit easier so then I thought to myself, you know, stop cheating yourself, do a full face portrait. And then I've done this one and I was really, really impressed with this one. This is uh, two brothers that fight in the UFC, uh, the, 
the, the Diaz brothers. It's uh, Nick and Nate Diaz. Um, and that's really about it. So that's kind of like my progression of my artwork up until today, up until current times. Uh, this is the most recent one here that I've done. Um, I think I, I, I'd used a mixture of Dermot Lightfast, Der or Karen Dash Luminance, and I think maybe a few Prismacolor. I can't remember exactly what I'd used, but this one is a speed drawn uh, on my channel as well. So I was really, really impressed. I I've done pastel drawings and things like that as well, which I haven't included into this, but... Uh, I done a few. I've done a few pastel drawings, which you will be able to find on the the art gear guide, and I've done a few watercolor paintings as well, uh, like the roses that I've done with the Arteza brush pens. Um, so I will have. You can see those images as well, but I mean, like all the artwork that I've showcased here, you will be able to find on the art gear guide because I have it all up, and and you 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 can flick through it and and get a better look at it i just wanted to do this video for anybody that's just starting out in art because i can remember when i started out i was really really frustrated at times i thought you know i'm never going to get better or anything like that but mainly down to a lot of encouragement from especially the color pencil community but the art community in general um the encouragement and the um support that i got from you guys was just amazing and also the inspiration that i got from all the other artists that i was watching and still do watch on youtube uh the likes of lisa clive from lucky fine art and um stephen ward and um on instagram there's a whole gamut of artists there that are watching lethal chris and mark crilly and all, all these really really good artists that do tutorials um on, I mean, there's so many of them to, to name, but the inspiration is there and it's all just about down to practice and enjoying what you're doing as well. I think um, if, you, if you're not enjoying what you're doing, then you're going to struggle with it. And I think you'll find it difficult if you're forcing yourself to do something that you don't really want to do. I started out wanting to do this because it was helping me with my own issues that I was having at the time with PTSD and, and depression, things that got from my time in the army. Um, and as I got deeper and deeper into it, I started by getting de developing a real strong passion for it. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this. I know it's been a long video, but I tried to get through it as quick as I could. Um, I just want to say to you now, just in case I don't do another video before Christmas, I wish you all a very, very Merry Christmas and I think I hope you all have the most wonderful day uh, on Christmas and that you are surrounded by all your loved ones and the people that love you the most uh, and you have, you have a, a, a just a fantastic day. And I'll see you, um, I'll definitely have a video out before the new year, so I'll see you again before the new year, but maybe not before Christmas. So. Have a wonderful Christmas, guys. And if you're going out and having parties and stuff like that, be careful coming home. Always be careful just when you're just drinking and stuff like that because um, we all know things can go wrong. Okay, guys, thanks very much. Thank you all so much for your support. And um, I look forward to seeing you again in the next video. Bye.